In our last video in the Trash Guide series, we set up Unraid to use hard links and got our folder structure in order. In this video, we are going to be setting up Deluge according to Trash Guides and using the cache option within Unraid. If you do not have a cache drive, I recommend you get one and add it to your system. I'll leave a link in the description to a drive that I recommend. If you set up Deluge following my previous guide, then make these adjustments to get Deluge set up for trash and to change to the wire guard. If this is your first time setting up Deluge, stick around because we're going to do a quick install and then we'll get into the configuration. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is jump over to the apps tab and install Deluge. So click on apps. In the search box, type in Deluge. And we're going to do the Deluge VPN. You'll see that I already have it installed. But for you, if you don't have it installed, this actions button will say install. So you're going to go ahead and click on that. And then this page will come up. And if you already have the Binhex Deluge VPN installed, then just go ahead and click actions and click edit. All right, here we are on Binhex's Deluge VPN setup page. First thing I'm going to change here is a network type. I'm going to change it from bridge to my proxy network. In this case, I named it Alien Proxy, so I'm going to choose that one. Post port 1. If this is a new install, just make sure that port's available. And if it's not, go ahead and change it to something that is. I know my port is clear, so I'm going to move on. Host port 2, 3, and 4 are all fine, along with 5. So host path 2, we're going to change this. This is our old download directory, so we're going to change this to the new one. So we're going to click onto that. We're going to go delete out the backups. So we've got slash mnt slash user. Then I'm going to go to data and then into torrents. This is where all of our downloads are going to go. Key 1 is set to yes. This is for VPN. You definitely want that enabled. Key 2 is your VPN username. And key 3 is your VPN password. And then key 4 is the VPN that you're going to be using. I'm going to be using the Private Internet Access or PIA VPN. If you're not familiar with the Private Internet Access, it's a VPN provider and they do a fantastic job. If you're not a Private Internet Access customer yet, go ahead and use the link in the description to get started. I've been using it for years. And it's been rock solid. I haven't had one issue with it and I personally think it's the best VPN out there. And you'll get a pretty hefty discount using that link too. So go ahead and check them out. All right, moving on. All right, key five. In my previous Deluge video, we had set up OpenVPN as the VPN client to use. We're going to change that to WireGuard today. It's lightweight, it's more modern, and it's faster. Key six, we can leave blank. Key seven, we want set to yes. Key eight, we also want set to yes. This allows other traffic to go through the VPN, such as other dockers and, and our desktop. Key nine is the LAN network. The information you put in here will be the first three sections of your local LAN network, followed by dot zero slash 24. So for me, it's going to be 10.0.0, .0 then I'm going to add in the dot zero slash 24. Key 10, name servers, those are all fine. Go ahead and leave that. Key 11 is good. Everything else looks good. So just go down to the bottom, click apply, and then done. Now we're going to go into our Binhex Deluge VPN Docker container and adjust it for trash guides. So let's go up to the Docker tab, find Deluge, click on the icon, and we're going to go to Web UI. And as you can tell, the site can't be reached because we need to finish setting up WireGuard. So I'm going to close that. I'm going to browse to my app data folder. In this case, for me, it's going to be backslash backslash 10.0.0.11 backslash and then app data. In there, you are going to find your Binhex Deluge VPN folder. Open that up. You'll find a WireGuard folder in there. Go ahead and open that up. In there, you'll see a wg0.conf file. We're going to edit that. I'm going to use Notepad++. And the last item in this file, you'll see endpoint equals nl-amsterdam.privacy.network colon 1337. I am not anywhere close to Amsterdam, so I'm going to change this to a site that's closer to me, and that is going to be Toronto. So I'll just replace the beginning part with ca-toronto.privacy.network colon 1337. I'm working on creating a website that I can post these endpoints on, but creating a website is not my specialty, so it's taking some time. For now, I'll see about getting you a link to all the endpoints and put it in the description. If you have some ideas on how I can post this information, leave me a comment and let me know how. All right, go ahead and hit save, and then we're going to exit. Now we can go adjust the Deluge app settings. I'm going to go over to our Docker. I'm going to go ahead and restart Deluge now. Give it a moment, and then we'll log back in. All right, after giving it a few seconds, Deluge is up. So you're going to go ahead and log in. We're going to go up to Preferences, and then to Downloads. The previous video, we'd set up our downloads to go into slash data slash incomplete. And then once they're done, we're going to move them into slash data slash completed. We're going to get rid of that because we're not going to do that anymore. The download to folder is going to be slash data slash torrents. And then we want to select pre-allocate disk space. Now, if you're running a ZFS file system, then make sure you don't select pre-allocate disk space. Otherwise, go ahead and select it. The pre-allocate disk space limits fragmentation and make sure that you have enough drive space available before the file actually starts downloading. All right, go over to the network tab, click onto that. The UPnP and the NAT PMP, we are going to disable those. If you're using private trackers, then most all of them want you to disable peer exchange, LSD, and DHT. If you're using public trackers like I am, then just go ahead and leave those three selected. Next, we have encryption. You want to make sure that incoming, outgoing are both set to enabled. And then for level, we're going to set that to full stream. Bandwidth is next. 
We're going to select negative one for all of these, except for the last two here, the maximum half open connections and the maximum connection attempts. So our maximum connections is going to be negative one, maximum upload slots, negative one, download speed, upload speed are both negative one, and negative one is basically meaning there's no limits. We're going to change the half open connections to 125, same with the maximum connection attempts, 125. Now, if you find that everything's kind of lagged down and it's slow, then you can go in here and you're going to adjust these last two numbers to something a little lower. So start with 100 and then lower it from there if you need to. The per torrent bandwidth usage is all negative one as well. Now we're going to jump over to Q. Under active torrents, we want the total to be negative one and the seating to be negative one. And then for downloading, you can set that number to whatever suits your needs. I'm going to go ahead and change mine to five. That's how many active download clients you'll have going at a time. We're going to choose to ignore slow torrents. Then under seating rotation, Trash Guides recommends setting up these in the R apps, but for now, I'll go ahead and set the share ratio to 2, the time ratio to 6, and the time minutes to 180. The share ratio reached option, we are going to disable that. We'll uncheck that. Next, we're going to go over to plugins. And there, my previous video, I had done extractor and label, and those are both fine, so I'm going to leave that. The extractor is to unzip zip files if those are downloaded, and the label applies labels from the different R platforms. You definitely need that. Go ahead and select those, and hit apply, and then OK. Over on the left-hand side, under filters, if you look down below, you'll see a label option down here. Go ahead and click on it, and it shows you the different labels that are already created in the system. If you need to add one, you can right-click on labels and do add label. So we can add in a label here. Let's say, let's call this one audiobook. Go ahead and hit OK, and you'll see it's created that label. Once you've got your labels created in there, you're going to find a label, you'll right-click on that label, and you're going to do label options. That open up a new little window. Here you can adjust the settings for each individual label, but what we're concerned about is the folders option. Go ahead and click folders, then you're going to apply the folder settings. You're going to select move completed to, and we're going to enter backslash data backslash torrents, and then you match the appropriate folder per category. So for me, audiobooks, I have one called audiobooks, then you'll press OK. You're going to repeat this for each one. So radar, that's for movies, so we're going to go there, label options, folders, Apply folder settings, move completed to, backslash data, backslash torrents, backslash movies. So go ahead and do that for each label. If you're finding this video helpful, make sure to hit that like button so that I know to keep creating more trash guide videos. Now we need to configure the Unraid Mover and how that interacts with Deluge. When the torrents are active, the mover is not able to move the files from the torrents folder to their proper homes. We're going to use a special script to pause the torrents, run the mover, and then resume the torrents. We're going to need to install a couple plugins first, user scripts, and nerd tools. Let's go do that. Back over on your server, we're gonna to go to apps. In the search box, type in user scripts, and then press enter. All right, there's user scripts, first one. You go ahead and click on the install action. I already have it installed, but for you, just go ahead and click install. Then we need to go back to the search box and type in nerd tools. You'll find that in the list here. Go ahead and hit install on that one as well. Go ahead and hit OK in the attention window. Now let's go get those configured. We need to go to settings. At the bottom, you'll find nerd tools. It looks like a little cogwheel. Click onto it, give it a second to load up. Then I'm going to hit Control F for find, and I'm going to type in Python. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a list of them here together. This is what we're looking for. We want Python 3, so go ahead and turn that on. And that's going to turn on Python setup tools and the Python PIP, which we need all three of those. So once that is done, scroll down, hit apply, and it will download those packages. And when it's done, press done. Now we need to set the Deluge Mover Python file to install and start up. To do that, let's go to settings. We're going to go down to user scripts at the very bottom. All right, inside user scripts, we're going to go ahead and hit add new script. We're going to name this install requests deluge mover. Going to hit OK. We'll find it in the list here, and it is right here. If you hover over the little cogwheel icon, once it pops up, go ahead and hit edit script. Line one here is going to have some predefined information. We need that in there, so go ahead and leave it. Go down to line two, and we're going to type in PIP3 space install space requests. Make sure it's all right. PIP3 space install space requests. It looks good to me. I'm going to hit save changes. We'll find it back in the list here. Install request deluge mover. We're going to go over to the schedule. It is currently disabled. We want to set this to run at first race start only. Now to get the script to install, you either have to restart your array, or you can just hit run in the background, which is what I'm going to do. Then go ahead and hit done. I'll leave a link in the description to the script, so go find that link and click on it, and it'll take you here. Once you have the script on your screen, press Ctrl A to highlight everything, and then copy. So go ahead and open up your favorite text editor. Mine is Notepad++, so go ahead and open that. We'll paste that in. We're going to scroll to the top. And up near the top, you're going to find this configuration variables. The first one we're concerned about is the Deluge web UI. We need to set this to our server address. So go ahead and leave the quotes. We're going to take out localhost and change this to our server IP address, which is 10.0.0.11 for me. Colon 8112 is the port that I'd use for Deluge. If yours is different, just go ahead and set yours accordingly. 
The next item we need to change will be the Deluge password. Anytime you see quotes here, you're going to leave the quotes there because they are needed. So go ahead and change your password. I think the default password for Deluge is Deluge, so I'm going to change it to that. There are other options here you can fine tune things with, but those two are the only ones you really need to change. There's one other option you might want to look at, and that's down here where it says age day min and age day max. Once you've made the adjustments to your script, go ahead and hit control A to select everything and then copy it. We're done here, so I'm going to just minimize notepad for now. All right, back to our server here. If you are not on the user scripts page, go back to settings and then click on user scripts to get you back here. Next, we need to hit add new script. And here we're going to call this one deluge dash mover and then hit OK. Find deluge dash mover in the list, hover over the gear and go to edit script. Now you paste in the information you just had. So before you do that, make sure to remove line one so it's completely blank and then paste in the information and hit save changes. Find the deluge mover in the list over on the right. Click on the schedule disabled, drop down and select custom. A little further to the right, you'll see custom cron schedule. The schedule we're gonna put on here is gonna be at 4 a.m. So it's gonna be zero space four space star space star space star. Once you've got that in there, we're gonna click apply and then done. So what we've done is we've created a script that will temporarily pause the torrents, run the mover action, and then resume the torrents. And it's gonna do that at 4 a.m. every single day. If you got some value from this video, check out one of these videos next. In the next Trash Guide video series, we'll be setting up Qubit Torrent. I'll see you in that one.